At the beginning, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Hany, Professor Hany Hafiz, Dr. Ayman Rifai, and all the organizers for this beautiful meeting. And today, I will be talking about the pain management in chronic kidney disease. And at the beginning, we need to know that the pain is really <coughs> prevalent in our patients, in the patients with chronic kidney disease. And it accounts for more than 60 to 70 percent of patients have a complaint of pain. Although the underlying etiologies of pain may vary, the pain per se has been linked to lower the quality of life and depression. There are several reasons for the pain among the patients with chronic kidney disease. They have the reasons of the pain like any other um, person or like all the uh, general population. And there are some etiologies that are strictly related to the CKD, like the polycystic kidney disease patients, uh, peripheral vascular uh, disease, neuropathies, uh, muscle cramps, uh, osteodystrophies, and all other reasons. When we start to um, manage pain in the CKD patients, we have at the beginning to differentiate between the acute pain and the chronic pain. If I'm going to give the patient analgesia just for three days or for a week, it's different than giving analgesia on the long term. So. To define acute pain, it's the pain that typically persists for less than three months, and usually it do not progress, and that it tends to respond well to analgesia. On the other hand, the chronic pain, which are painful conditions that persist for more than three months, and usually they do not respond well to the analgesia. We have to analyze first the nature of the pain. Not all the pain types are treated the same way. The severity of the pain, and of course, the severity of the kidney dysfunction. So, who, how to assess and who to assess we should assess patients, our CKD patients, we should assess them routinely, not when they just complain. So we usually, or we have to assess them on routine basis every three months and check if they have any complaint of pain, as is usually prevalent. There are several, several tools that are available to assess the patients with chronic pain, and there are eight tools that are specific for the kidney patients that we can use. And this is one of the examples uh, that gives a score for the pain intensity. It has the pain, the um, tiredness, and all the other um, complaints or symptoms that could be accompanying the pain. We should know the type of the pain. We have the nociceptive pain and the neuropathic pain and mixed type between the both types. And in our CKD patients, most of them have the mixed type. So what's nociceptive pain? It's any pain that results from tissue damage in the skin, in the muscle and other tissues. It's like a sharp knife-like uh, pain that's felt at the site of the damage and it usually, it usually tends to respond well to the analgesia. Neuropathic pain, that we all know, it results from the damage to the nervous system, and it may be felt sight distant to the damage according to the distribution of the nerve. It's burning, shooting, and electrical uh, pain, and usually this type of pain responds poorly to analgesia and requires long duration of pain management. In the general population, when we start to treat pain, especially the chronic pain, we have, um, we have to approach it uh, on different ways, on the physical, with the physical medicine, exercising, stretching, uh, behavior medicine, neuromodulation, interventions, and surgical uh, intervention if it is required. 
and the pharmacological approach should be the last. But of course, in our patients, most of the physical and the other would be difficult due to the frailty of the chronic kidney or uh, the dialysis patients. But still, we have to approach the other options. And we have to discuss with the patients the pain, the intensity of the pain, and what are the goals that we are going to reach. And sometimes, we are not able to cure the patient uh, completely, but we can decrease the intensity of the, pay, the pain and patients should be aware of this. So the optimal patient outcomes often result from the multiple approaches utilized in concert and coordinated by a multidisciplinary team of pain specialists. So now uh, our main concern today is about the pharmacological approach and we have five principles of pain management within the context of advanced kidney, uh, chronic kidney uh, disease. Um, it should be by mouth. It's preferably to be by mouth, by the oral route. In some patients, especially patients on dialysis, they prefer to have it um, after the dialysis or IV, but this can cause more uh, complications and maybe more addictive, addictive. So it's preferable to be by mouth, by the clock, meaning by the clock that if the medicine should be taken every six hours, every eight hours, then the patient should be receiving the medication on time and not when the pain starts. By the ladder, that it should be gradual. We start with one medicine, one type or one class of analgesia, and then we move to the other or to the third uh, if needed. For the individual, everything should be tailored according to each patient and we have to give attention to the details and to the side effects that happens to the patient later on. This is um, the ladder uh, pain uh, management. This is supposed to be for the general population that in the mild pain we start with one type of analgesia and usually it's the non-opioid. Uh, plus or minus an adjuvant, like we will talk uh, later on. And then, if the pain is severe or the patient is not responding to the uh, first class, then we add another class of analgesia, and then we add another third according to the intensity of the pain and to the response of the patient to this pain. So let's first see what are the options that we have, what are the type of medicine, medications that are available that we are using. We have the non-opioid analgesia, like the acetaminophen, the paracetamols, and non-steroidals. We have the opioids, like codeine, hydromorphone, oxycodone, hydrocodone, meperidine, and fentanyl. And we have weak opioids and strong opioids. And it's usually preferable to use a strong opioid rather than using a weak one because if we use a weak one and we do not get response and we are giving more doses and we are having more side effects. So usually we need to use the strong opioids. The adjuvants like the anti-epileptic medications or the tricyclic antidepressants. What type of drug do we choose? We choose according to the metabolism and the, bio, uh, the availability of the uh, medicine in our market according to the clinical comfort and experience of the medical team with the medications and with, with its side effects, with the patient's preference if it's oral or transdermal or whatever uh, effect, and the side effects that's uh, occurring to the patients. So let's start with the acetaminophen which is the first line analgesia especially in the nociceptive uh, pain types and it's extensively metabolized in the liver and it's the cumulative doses are not likely to have effect on the CKD progression. So it's considered to be relatively safe to give to a full dose to patients with advanced chronic kidney disease. In the opioids, for the patients who do not respond to acetaminophen alone, a strong opioid is added. And the preferred opioids are the hydromorphone, Fentanyl, methadone, and buprenorphine. The hydro, uh, hydromorphone, which is better tolerated than 
the hydromorphine, which we usually we avoid using in the chronic kidney disease patients, and it should be used with caution among all kidney uh, uh, disease patients and with close observation to the side effects. The hydromorphone has a high potential of respiratory depression and it is removed with dialysis, so it's not advisable to use it in patients who are uh, anuric or the patients who are anuric and not on uh, dialysis. The methadone, which is particularly useful in the patients with chronic kidney uh, disease, it's excreted mainly in the feces, and in the anuric patients, it's exclusively excreted in the feces, and the drug and its metabolites are, do not seem to be removed by hemodialysis, so there are no um, extra doses required, yet a careful monitoring of um, QT uh, prolongation should be put in consideration. And it, can, it may be more effective for the treatment of the neuropathic pain than the other opioids. The fentanyl, which is rapidly metabolized in the liver, its metabolites are considered to be inactive, and there does not appear to be of any clinical significant accumulation of the fentanyl when administered to our patients. And the alfentanyl has a similar profile like the fentanyl. Uh, Boprenorphine, which is an effective long-acting uh, opioid. Uh, it can be administered sublingually or by a transdermal patch. It's particularly useful for the patient with severely reduced GFR and it's completely metabolized by the liver. What are the opioids that we should avoid? We should avoid morphine, uh, which, ha which can cause a life-threatening or fatal respiratory depression in patients with a GFR less or below than uh, below uh, 30. Codeine, which is metabolized in the liver and its active metabolite is morphine. Uh, the percentage of the conversion of codeine to morphine is in individual patients is highly variable due to the genetic polymorphism of the CYP2D6 gene and it can result in life-threatening or fatal respiratory depression. The tramadol is metabolized in the liver um, and it has a bi unpredictable uh, bioavailability due to the genetic polymorphism and 90% of the tramadol in its metabolites are excreted in the urine. So even low doses of the tramadol among patients with advanced chronic kidney disease may cause significant side effects including central nervous system depression. The oxycodone we avoid due to the risk of the respiratory uh, depression, yet sometimes it can be used as a second line agent if the others have failed to manage pain. Meperidine or patidine uh, is contraindicated in all patients with chronic kidney disease. Uh, it's um, metabolized in the liver to active metabolites which, which have a pro-convulsive activity. The other adjuvants that we use are the gabapentin and the pregabaline. Where both of them have almost the same uh, profile and they are specifically beneficial for the patients with neuropathic pain. Uh, they are uh, cleared by the kidney and their uh, elimination is markedly reduced by the uh, reduced uh, GFR, so those has to be adjusted in CKD patients. And among patients with severely reduced GFR, gabapentin and pregabaline may have a beneficial effect on the pruritus, pruritus, restless leg syndrome, and poor sleep. The tricyclic antidepressants, although tricyclic antidepressants are considered the first line uh, for the pharmacologic treatment of neuropathic pain in the general population, uh, they are kept, uh, they are the second line in the chronic kidney disease patients due to their side effects, uh, uh, anticholinergic, histaminergic, uh, and adrenergic side effects. The tricyclic antidepressants, the amitriptyline, has been the most widely studied, but there are others. And the carbamazepine is a tricyclic compound um, related to the um, TCAs and it's commonly treated for seizures. And uh, it has maybe as effective as the gabapentin in treating the 
uh, neuropathic pains. So this is, at, uh, yani according to the uh, WHO, the letter, and we have recommended um, analgesia, the acetaminophen, the hydromorphone, the fentanyl, the methadone, and buprenorphine, the gabapentin, and the pregabalin are recommended to use. The oxycodone, the carbamazepines, and the tricyclic antidepressants, we can use, but still with caution. And we should avoid using the non-steroidals, tramadol, morphine, meperidine, and the propoxyphene. The medical cannabis for chronic pain, can it make a difference in pain management? And there are many reports on our trials showing the therapeutic effects of cannabis and there are reports using a combination command of cannabinoid therapies for the chronic of pain management. And actually, reports have shown that they have less addictive than nicotine and alcohol. So maybe we can use them one day. <laughs> now, we're giving, we'll give just some examples for managing the pain in practice. So if we have a patient with acute pain, we're using the same uh, ladder management that we have, plus the nerve blockers and the epidural anesthesia. So if we're managing a post-operative patients in, with chronic kidney disease, in, in patients with chronic kidney disease stage one, their treatment should not differ than the, the general population. In the mild pain, we use acetaminophen and minus steroids, plus or minus the tramadol, moderate to severe, the, we can add opioids to them, and, in, and the perioperative gabapentin and pregabalin should be used as adjuvant in selected cases like trauma or neuropathic pain. In stage two, we try to avoid the non-steroidals, but they are still, uh, we can still use them, but the, as a third uh, option, uh, in stages three and four, we should avoid non-steroidals, and we can use acetaminophen, tramadols, and opioids. Uh, in patients of the dialysis, um, on dialysis, prefer nerve block whenever possible, and we should take care with, the, with epidural, um, especially for the hematomas in the patients of dialysis, acetaminophen and tramadol, and all the other treatments. And of course, we are all aware of the non-steroidal complications that could affect the patients with chronic kidney disease or end stage. Uh, this table is just shows all the medicine, medications that we have mentioned and with all the dose adjustments uh, according to the stage of the chronic kidney disease. Like we've seen, we can see here the pregabal and the gabapentin and that those should be reduced according to the uh, level. In the chronic pain, we should differentiate between the nociceptive and the neuropathic pain. So if we're managing, ma managing a patient with a nociceptive, lower just a, a tissue injury, we start with the acetaminophen, and if it's ineffective, we add an opioid like the hydromorphone, fentanyl, uh, methadone or buprenorphine. If in chronic neuropathic pain, we start with the gabapentin or pregabalin, and then we switch to the tricyclic if not responding. Then we can add acetaminophen and an opioid, opioid at the end. Management of the chronic mixed types, we start with the acetaminophen plus the gabapentin or the pregabalin, and if it's ineffective, we add an opioid. Uh, and we'll, I will end with this slide showing a comparative a comparison between the neuropathic and the nociceptive pain. And the trial of each step should take between one to four weeks before progressing to the next step and evaluating the patient's response. Thank you very much.